So, suppose there are four people in a bar, and for each person, there is a card kept on the table. Picture is adjacent, and one side of the card reads their age. For example, there are two cards which are showing the age. and the other other side shows the drink that they are having there are four people is there a problem with my connection there was but it's back on it's back on so for each person there is a card one side of the card reads their age the other side shows their drink four cards are here the legal age for drinking is 18 So far, so good. Question is, which cards need to be flipped to check for any violations? Amongst these four cards, which one do you need to flip to check if any person is violating this rule? That the legal age for drinking alcohol. When I say drinking, I mean alcohol. Is everybody with me? I I feel lost. Uh, can you please uh, explain the question? I mean, why can't we just flip every card and check it? Right. So what, what are the catch here? Correct. So what are the necessary ones? Like, if you, of course you can flip one of them. Which ones are necessary for you to flip? Without the smallest flip, you number, you have to flip the card. Smallest number, but which ones? That's right. What is the smallest number? But which ones? So, uh, Mother Bid, you are on mute. If you are speaking, I was just speaking for myself. <laughs> in in other words, we are asking which cards are useless. Like you, you don't have to check. Yes, there can be no way of some underage person drinking on those cards. On the cards which are which are more than eighteen are useless. How many cards do you think we should check? So that's one card more than eighteen. That's one card less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have to check three cards. Is three the minimum number? Ah, uh, so three is what the answer should be uh, from that argument. Does anybody want to get uh, say what uh, something else, or does everybody agree with three? Ishan, and uh, you just sent a personal message to me. Uh, perhaps you can try to send a message to everyone. So this is coming directly to me. Did I make any any attempt? But the legal age for drinking is only alcohol is violation, right? If age is less than eighteen and drinking alcohol, that is violation, right? Yes. So correct. So only legal age for drinking alcohol. So you're saying you don't need to flip this one? The no, soda is useless. Okay. Yeah. I'm very slow. I also think soda is useless, kind of. Soda is useless. All right. And this is also, as pointed out earlier, this is also useless. So this was a very simple puzzle. I think you guys are too nervous to speak up. Yeah. Ishan also said the same thing. Yeah. So. If somebody is sixteen years old, it is possible that the on the other side of this card there is alcohol. So we need to check if there if so. It is very light. On the other side there is soda. Fine, no problems. <laughs> But uh, on the other side, if there is alcohol, we need to check. So in some sense, yeah, you don't need to flip this one because you already know. But for this one again, you have to check. Uh, the last one, it is possible that the on on the other side the number is three. So uh, you have to check. Right, so two cards. These are not required. But interestingly, interestingly, suppose I change the puzzle a little bit. This time I have four cards placed on the table, and here is the statement that I make. If there is an even number on a card, then The other side of the card 
is red. So here there is no bar, no alcohol, nothing. We just have cards. Each side of a card, uh, there are two sides of a card. One side is a number, the other side is a color. Some color, green, purple, magenta, whatever color. Whatever, and on the other side, whatever numbers, some natural number. And there is, and, and this is a statement. If there is an even number on one side, then the other side is necessarily red. Are there violations? The question is, are there violations to to this uh, this rule and how many cards do you need to flip or which card do you need to flip to check? Uh, can you just say is the uh, in between if there is, uh, there is sorry, there is an even number? Uh, yeah, if there is. All right, Ishan has given correct answer, but uh, I would still like to check for three and blue. Three and blue. Think again, think again. Eight and blue. Which ones? Eight. Number eight and color blue. Eight and blue, okay. Okay. Now, I can say that three and red. <laughs> all, all the cases will be covered. In a week. So, one of eight and blue. Three and blue. And there was another answer, eight and blue. So, eight and blue has more, more, more words. Is the question clear for everybody? If you have doubt with the question, please ask. One thing I would like to say uh, is that when we say if there is an even number on a card and the other side is red, it is a similar situation as to the previous one. I don't know if you guys are already comfortable with these statements, but if the card does not have an even, so when we say if P then Q, where P and Q are two statements or propositions, any P or Q could the properties hain. so when we say if p then q or agar humne koi example dikhaya jisme ki p galat hai p is false aur usme q ki value true hai to kya humne is property ka contradiction dikhaya ki nahi dikhaya this is the main main point of the, of the thing so i, I if, if you uh, if abhishek can write p implies q on the slide I think you guys should be able to at least figure out what is P and what is Q from the above statement. Iska is statement ka se yehi art ho ta hai ki jab jab P is true hai, tab tab Q bhi true hoga. Agar P hi true nahi hai, to hum Q ke baare mein kuch nahi kaise. Okay, so this is this is the same problem as the previous one. There is no difference between this problem and the previous problem. And again, if like if you consider this card, behind that there could be any color. Magenta, who cares? The, the statement P has no bearing on R. So you don't need to flip this over. However, this is an even number. So if, if behind this number you, you do not see red, there is a violation. So you don't need to flip this over. This is a blue card. If behind this there is an odd number, there is a violation. Sorry, if behind this, behind this, there is an even number. There is a violation. Right? If behind this, there is an even number, let's say 4, then it would violate our statement. The card has an even number, but it does not have an end. However, the last one, doesn't matter. Behind this, there could be any number. Odds fine, even fine. Even is confirming to the statement. Odd is not contradicting the statement. So this is a very uh, famous uh, uh, puzzle which is called Vaison Selection Test. And it has been found that and the previous puzzle, this one, is far easier for people to solve. People give correct answers. But somehow this one poses a lot of problem for us, problems for us. Even though they are exactly the same. 
and this tells us something about ourselves that there is even though it doesn't speak to our speak is uh, doesn't really say anything about our intelligence because you can solve the equivalent puzzle very easily while most people struggle with this it says something about how our brains are wired and that we can we can overcome that conditioning of ours or we can fool our mind yeah, i am waiting is there is there a second question more of a linguistic questions that is the problem with that question like it is more of a linguistic question we can't relate with it so well when you have brains and ages that that somehow is a very natural setup in our mind but this becomes linguistics and not many times the art of mathematics is to and you know absorb the mathematics as is it were not purely linguistics even though technically speaking mathematics is linguistics i think it brings back that thing which i mentioned in the last class by giving analogies to whatever principle or whatever strategy you learn that makes it more human that makes it more relatable and then you will be able to recall and or make a connection and maybe solve the question if you create your own analogy for any kind of new thing you learn make more relatable to you so ye jo hum bol rahe hain bar bar ki go to the question do try everything i think it's in that context that make it relatable to you so that you can do or you can use the same thing again in future Uh, just one homework exercise here uh, to show that P implies Q is the same as not Q implies not P. We can probably put this on. Yeah. Implies Q is the same as not Q implies not P. If you can understand, there is also something. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead to that. If you can understand this, then at least you you know that. you will be on solid ground for using contradiction and you really understand the meaning of this implication sign because often times this is uh, something which i remember that when when we get introduced to these logical symbols we or the the kind of if then statement that abhishek has written our linguistic understanding and our logical understanding are not in synchrony like sometimes we think that this is what is meant whereas something else is meant by the statement this will help clarify whether you have understood or not so whether you show that p implies q is the same as showing that not q implies not aur ye bahut aasan hona chahiye matlab agar aap usko hindi mein bole ya jis bhi bhasha mein aapko zyada comfort hai usme aap bole to ye cheez aapko saralta se dikhni chahiye ki aisa ho raha hai when people are easily able to use this in debates when you're debating with someone people are able to use this without knowing that they are using this but in a mathematical context a lot of people fault for all their existence most of the time people make mistakes unless you're trained 